Wahoo Docs is the industry leader. But that isn't something we came by overnight. That was a 30 year effort to build the best dock, which is what we have today in our two brands, Cat 5 and the Cat 3. Both, beyond a doubt, the best docks in the marine industry. There's a lot of advantages to being the largest residential dock builder in the world. Um, maybe eight or nine of our main products that we buy are our proprietary products made specifically for us, uh, which is good in many respects, price being one of them. Um, the ones that perhaps we aren't a proprietary product to us, um, we're, we're, we're generally the largest customer of these folks, so we do get the best pricing. Um, also, because we do the volume that we do, and this is probably the biggest feature, we're able to really perfectly design our product. So be it um, a specific decking or specific shape for our aluminum, be it aluminum, you know, our railing has 15 unique proprietary castings and extrusions that we ourselves use. So if we're to look at, you know, look at the railing on any competitive dock, you're not going to find the fit and finish that we have. Um, you don't see the cut marks, you don't see the the, the after finished paint that they'll come back and, and uh, put paint on it. Um, those are the things that, that allow us to really have a dock that is unlike any other. So. From a technology standpoint, no one is even close to what we have where the industry standard for really any peer might be um, AutoCAD or uh, maybe SolidWorks or you know Excel for planning purposes. We've developed two in-house systems that uh, really can't even be compared to, to what anyone else might have. And what they do is they really help us operate efficiently and design every dock to be uh, with, with our standards and to be sort of ideally floated design to handle whatever environment they're going in. So our first system, maybe uh, seven years in development, uh, is called DOTS for short. Um, uh, the design uh, and order tracking system. Uh, and what it does is it helps us really manage everything about a dock once the order is placed, it actually gives us pricing for quotes, um, but it moves through every step of the process. So when a client has a vision of a dock, they he has to. This is what has to happen for for, for a customer to be happy. They have to. Ha you know, the client has a vision. It gets to our rep local representative. That local representative has to help that client refine that vision to what's feasible or permissible on a lake. They come up with that vision. That information has to get to us. It has to sort of get through our engineering uh, pre-process to make sure it's feasible. We have to design and engineer that dock. It has to get to the shop and be built appropriately. Then we have to put it on a truck. It has to be shipped back to the, to the local representative, installed, and hopefully in the end, the customer comes out and says, this is better than what I want. DOTS helps us track that whole process and lets us do it better than anybody else. And so our on-time record is better than anybody else. Um, it, it, it really is pretty, it's almost 100% because of DOTS. Our other system is DREAM, and that uh, acronym is for um, Dock Rendering Engine and Modeler. And it is uh, basically uh, a NASA project, if you will. Um, it's it takes some basic inputs, so you can put the design of a dock uh, inputs. Maybe takes 30 seconds to say this is what the dock is going to be. And Dream literally puts every piece, designs the dock, uses our algorithms to figure out where every piece should go, and puts every piece in 3D space. What that does is allows us to analyze the dock, 
Dream also allows us to, uh, it, this is, I'm sure it's the only program in the industry that does that, it allows us to look at the flotation on the dock to make sure the dock is going to be floating properly. Nothing in the industry, uh, that's a, uh, you know, a, a three variable equation, uh, not a simple uh, project, but um, makes us, uh, allows us to look at the dock and make sure that that dock is going to be floated properly every time allows us to look at it, to put that dock into a uh, finite element analysis program, make sure everything is going to work right, and 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 also makes make sure that we get the dock right so that it says we need you know 827 uh, decking screws. That's how many we need, uh, and so there really is nothing uh, that will ever come along in this industry, I'm sure, that could rival Dream. So if you take those two programs together. They uh, greatly assist Wahoo in being able to provide every time a dock that gets where it's supposed to be on time uh, is the customer's vision so the customer doesn't have any um, surprises and is the best dock, is going to flow right, is the strongest dock every time. And so, yes, we've spent a lot developing those programs but they're just invaluable to providing the product that we're trying to provide. Our engineering talent at Wahoo has no peer in the residential or commercial world, uh, in the United States at least, and probably internationally. Uh, we have masters of engineering folks, we have PEs for uh, Florida, and, uh, California, South Carolina, Georgia. Um, we have engineering degrees from Ivy League universities. We're not paying uh, crazy amounts to get all this talent. Most of it uh, is really with the owners and uh, some key folks that we've hired. Um, what does it mean? Our, you know, we've been criticized in the past for value engineering our docs. I raise my hand and say, "Great, that's exactly what we're trying to do." We're trying to give you the best product for the cheapest possible price. And honestly, that is exactly what we've achieved with our two main lines, Cat5 and Cat3. I would say every internal meeting we have, almost every conversation with our dealer representatives is focused on four metrics. And when questions come up, those are the metrics we refer to every time. And what are they? Strength and durability um, is an obvious one. But the reality is, with our designs, the way we build our docks, what we use in our docks, we're able to achieve the top spot for strength and durability. Aesthetic appeal, obviously, very important. What we used to call uh, low maintenance, uh, we, we've changed with user experience. Uh, and I'll talk to you more about that, but it really is the sort of, what is it like to own the product? Uh, because docks inherently are a very high maintenance um, product that you own. And so what we've done is made our dock the, the, the one product that is going to have the least trouble, require the least maintenance over time. And lastly, customer service. So we reach back whenever there's gray areas and say, are we the top on each of these categories? There's not many industries where one could be the top on each of these categories in a product. The reality is, with what we have with our Cat 3 and our Cat 5, we're able to give customers the best product in four key areas. So the Cat 5 is really what sets Wahoo Docs apart today. Um, we developed it four years ago uh, through about a year's development effort. 
Um, and we started with a blank sheet of paper. And a lot of people say that perhaps, but this was truly from the ground up with um, you know, our engineering expertise. We literally had uh, interior designers uh, have input to get the, you know, we were trying to make it bigger, faster, stronger, the whole kit and caboodle. And the fact is, I think we achieved it. We also wanted to make it cheaper than, than the historic standard. And we weren't able to do that. We, we ended up adding about 5% to the cost for what we think we achieved is a 100% better product. We, we could have certainly taken costs out. We took costs out where we could. But the reality is this dock is so much stiffer, stronger, better looking than what we had out there. We made the strategic decision and said, hey, this is going to be the gold center. And guess what? It has, and it has propelled us yet again um, in, in our leadership position. We came out a few few years later with the Cat 3, which is uses a lot of the similar concepts of the Cat 5, um, but doesn't have all the rigidity. All, so we, we said, we don't want to make a dock that's substantially weaker from a structural standpoint. But what can we take out that will provide customers with a similar experience to what they get? It's still going to be stronger and better, but it might not be as stiff. It might not have the same flotation. Uh, and not all, and we took out some of the other uh, more aesthetic features of the dock to make it more of a price point for folks looking, you know, uh, looking for that uh, dock that's, again, still, I hate to say it's comparable because it really is so much superior in so many ways. Uh, but is a lower price point dock. The premise of both the docks uh, rests on the fact that aluminum has great properties for a marine product. Most people know of that aluminum does great in the marine environment because of its oxidation or lack of oxidation properties. The reality is aluminum actually oxidizes pretty quickly, very quickly. But what happens when it does is a barrier gets set up that is an incredibly hard barrier and it stops rusting, stops oxidizing. Steel, on the other hand, when it oxidizes, it turns red, which is why it's called rust, but it gets bigger and so it keeps on rusting. It'll rust right through. Aluminum doesn't do that and that's why aluminum does so well in the marine environments. It's also a very, it has different properties as steel, but it also has some similar properties as steel. It's about as strong, um, tensile strength wise. Um, it has one third the stiffness, one third the weight. Conducts heat really fast. Lots of different properties. The main thing is you really just want to understand the properties and design the dock around it. A lot of steel folks have gotten into creating aluminum docks and, the, and nine times out of ten, they fail miserably for a long, long time. And even after they stop failing, they still don't really know. They just know that this one doesn't break as much as, as the ones they started out with. But the reality is, if you understand aluminum properties, you can create a very good product. And that's what we've, we've done with the Cat 5 and Cat 3. One other property of aluminum is that it welds. Um, aluminum is, what's, is, a, is a tempered metal. So, when it comes out of the extruder, which is like a big Play-Doh machine, to create the shapes, the aluminum's heated to a certain temperature, cooled to a certain temperature, heated, cooled, and it's and that's called tempering. And what that does is it aligns the molecules basically. When when aluminum is welded on, those molecules get scattered, and that te and that tempering gets lost. And what does that mean in practice? it means that aluminum can lose up to 50% of its strength. That's a big deal. So that's why we design our docks around that principle. So the welds, if you look at the, the way the Cat 5 is designed from the, the structure to the roof poles to how the roof poles are attached to the, to the roof and the, and the structure itself, you'll see that the strength comes from structure being on structure and not from a butt weld as is found in so many other docks. So our docks are designed so that the highest load points are not weld points, 
the welds on the Cat 5 and the Cat 3 are there to keep the, the components in place and, and the structure of each component against the structure of each component is what provides the strength. That's unlike you'll see on any other competitive dock. Looking around our dock, you can start with the corners. The corners are uh, 12 or 13 pound per foot extrusion. Um, you know, we didn't put a cast. You know, we wanted to put a casting on the corners, but the reality is, castings can be inconsistent in strength. Uh, castings can have impurities. Uh, the only way we could achieve strength in the most critical part of the dock is by having an extrusion and and milling the extrusion after it comes out. And that was a, an aha moment for us. That was like, you know, this is the way to do a corner. And then if you look at these corners, what do the corners do? The corners have built-in pockets for the roof poles, which is critical on the corners um, because that's where the highest, if you look at a dock that breaks, you're gonna find the, the four corners are, are where it's gonna start coming apart. So we started with a blank sheet of paper and we said, you know, I don't care what the shapes look like. Let's get out of the box. Let's create something that um, is going to be ideal to create something to house your boat or to use on the water. That's why we have so many unique shapes. Today, Wahoo uses over 35 proprietary and in some cases patented extrusions and, and, and uh, castings um, for its docks. The reality is our docks are probably more beautiful from a technical perspective to me than from the uh, uh, the outward uh, appeal of how it looks. Uh, basically pull up the decking and that's my favorite part of the dock. Um, but what a user cares for really is this dock's got to work, it's got to be really strong, but I want my neighbors to think that this is the best dock on the lake. So we worked hard to create the prettiest dock on the lake. Um, from our four inch poles that um, with tapered corners to uh, uh, our proprietary mainframe bumpers that make the dock look like a, a solid piece of rock to, uh, to the way we, we wrap our poles with a, with a cap so that you can't see the decking cuts to our 15 piece railing uh, components where you can't see a cut and it looks honestly better than anything you would find on a house to our uh, high-end decking that we use to um, the powder coated poles a lot of people want powder coated poles we've, we've uh, done almost everything possible to make our docks finished out and look unlike anything you can get um, uh, anywhere. So from a low maintenance slash user experience standpoint, again, we've gone far and above what you can find anywhere else. Um, all the decking that we offer is one that's going to last a long, long time and look like it looks when you put it down for a long, long time. Honestly, you could put down pressure-treated pine and it looks good on day one. What we're hoping to do is for, the, for this dock to look like it looks today in five years, in ten years, and beyond. Um, our docks use almost completely powder-coated components when something is painted. Um, if you uh, look at any of our materials, um, the dock is fully aluminum, marine grade aluminum, or stainless steel, or either HDPE or UHMWPE. Uh, so um, we use products that aren't really going to deteriorate. Um, another thing is it. Again, there's the, so there's when we talk about maintenance, you're not going to be painting our docks, you're not going to be staining our docks, um, and that paint's not going to be flaking off in five years. Um, the reason we've expanded the concept of low maintenance to user experience because it is about user experience. It's not just about am I going to have to repaint this, which uh, 
And what that means is things like noise. One thing that's always driven me nuts about a floating dock is they're, they're, they're noisy. So again, we said, how can we eliminate this noise? So we've done that by being the only folks to uh, create a dock that actually has bushings that insulate the main aluminum to aluminum um, connection points, which is where the noise comes from. So if you look at our gangways, you'll see a, a, a ultra-high molecular weight polyethylene sleeve that insulates the hinge pin from the hinge. I mean, look at our... You can look at our hinge, uh, uh, the actual extrusions for our hinge. You'll not find that anywhere. That's a patented design hinge from us. Um, you can. The main thing that's neat about our docks, honestly, uh, from a user experience standpoint, look at the the bushings that insulate the roof poles from the pockets. So, I know you've if you've been on the water at all, you've heard the docks that squeak, squeak, squeak. That's primarily going to be those junctions where the roof poles meet the the roof and the in the mainframe we've put uh, plastic bushings to insulate those connections so there's no noise at all that comes from those it's a good example of the extents that we've gone to I won't say it's the perfect dock I'm obviously not that bold uh, uh, but the reality is we work very hard to work toward a very good dock and I think that's a good example of of that of that uh, effort we decided a long time ago that even if we had the best product and the best everything here it didn't mean anything if we weren't giving our clients the best customer service every time to that end we went out to build the very best dealer network and to support them with all the tools that we could and to help them become better every year. To that end, we have developed what is clearly, unequivocally, obviously the best dealer network in the marine industry, really within any product. We have over 100 dealers in almost every market in the United States. Our dealers are smart, they're motivated, and they're customer-centric, bar none. Most of them were the leading dock builder in their territory before they came on to become a Wahoo dealer. We support them in many ways, with probably the most key way being our annual meeting where we bring in our dealers from all over the country for a variety of activities. We talk about our technology. We talk about what competitors have and do and why our docks are different. We bring in um, uh, regulatory uh, folks to talk about um, the latest trends, what they're looking for, what they need. Um, and that works both ways. They see the professional level that we are attacking the dock industry. And then we get to hear their concerns as well. Um, we bring in, we, uh, we do a lot of dealer to dealer um, discussions. So there's just a best practices um, mentality. So when a dealer runs into a problem in Oklahoma, they can call the dealer in uh, Connecticut or wherever, or Florida or California. There's a lot to, that they can choose from, um, but there are, frankly, a lot of a lot of topics in this industry that that are of relevance. So, have you ever used this type of piling before, um, or this type of anchoring, or what do you think of this type of decking uh, when snow gets on it? Is there too much of a snow load? There's lots of issues, frankly. Um, and our annual retreat is, uh, bar none, uh, uh, the best way to learn, uh, uh, to expand your knowledge uh, in the dock industry. Well, I've been a Wahoo dealer for eight years. 
Uh, we chose the Wahoo brand because of its superior quality, fit and finish, and uh, honestly the other docks we looked at as a product to offer to our customers was uh, poorly built, poorly designed, a lot of failures. The, uh, the permit authorities like to see well-built product. They don't want to see docks out there with floats falling off and, and structural failures and, and liability issues. And they've come to expect uh, quality and, and performance from Wahoo. And, and that's been a, a great sales tool for us. Well, relative to lead times and, and, and delivery of our docks, um, the competition seems to be all over the place. They uh, sometimes hit their mark when they say that they're going to provide a dock by a certain date. Uh, more often than not, I don't think that they do hit that mark. And with uh, with Wahoo and the uh, the system for ordering the dock, designing the dock, engineering the dock, and getting it in the factory, getting it built, and getting it on a truck and actually shipped to the water has been a very dependable uh, source of, of getting the dock there on time. So it leads to my company's uh, performance being superior to that of my competitors because their, their providers just can't provide in a timely manner. So we do have schedules that are that are commitments and we do meet those schedules. We're, we're never late, we're, we're there on time, we're there when we say we will be. As, as a dock supplier, we are uh, aware that this is a, a large investment and it's something that you don't do lightly and you, you probably only do once or twice in your lifetime at the most. And with that said, you, you need a dealer that when you hand someone that deposit check, you can be comfortable that you're going to get what you're paying for. The customer really has to have respect for and confidence in someone that they'll hand that kind of a, of a deposit check to. And, and in the custom build nature of our product, it's necessary. We, we, we give a commitment, uh, we, we give a commitment on schedule, we give a commitment on quality, we give a commitment on price, and we meet those things. Um, the customer, on the other hand, has to give a commitment of a monetary investment and expect uh, that we're going to deliver, and, and that's what we promise to do. Very interesting story in that uh, we wanted to purchase a dock and we called the four local dock builders and none of which returned our calls. And being in sales all my life, I figured, wow, there's a heck of an opportunity here. So I searched the internet and I came across Wahoo Docks and I had a conversation with Scott Livingston. It lasted about 30 minutes and in the 31st minute I decided I want to be a Wahoo dealer. And Went down to the plant, saw the product, how it was made, and I knew instantly that it was a product that I wanted to have for myself. And uh, as things progressed, I built my dock for myself, and the neighbor says, "Where'd you build, who built your dock? I said, I did. Would you build one for me? Sure. And it just has taken off from there. And ever since the first dock, it's been a great uh, relationship. The product has always been delivered as a good product, and in a lot of cases, it sells itself. There's, there are three main differences. When I, when I buy something for myself, I want it to last a long time. And I'm willing to spend a little more money up front for, for a little peace of mind, knowing that I'm not have to go do service and not buy new stuff for this and replace parts and, and, and have to spend a lot of my time maintaining uh, anything I buy in life. So having a dock like this uh, allows me to spend more time in the lake and do the things that I want to do on the weekends. I don't want to stain, I don't want to do this, I don't want to do that. I want to go out there, use my boat, and have a good day at it and come back at the end of the day. Uh, that was probably the, the primary driver of why I think that most of my customers are buying our product now. And the second is aesthetics. I mean, when you pull up to the back of a home and the dock matches the home, you're like, oh my gosh, that's just the perfect, perfect package. And when you can couple those two things together, when you have a product that lasts a long time, that gives you a certain peace of mind, and that looks aesthetically pleasing, it's a winning package for that. Yeah. I, I found that, um, that my clientele generally is looking for something a cut above whatever else is out there. Uh, they own Mercedes-Benz cars. This is their second or their third home. Uh, but they enjoy their playtime. They enjoy their free time. And when they come to the lake, they want to go down to their dock, and they don't want to have to worry about it. They don't want to have to think about what they're going to have to do to it before they can start enjoying it. 
And the, the most common uh, feedback or most common com comments I get back as feedback is, this is so easy, I mean, just enjoy it. There's nothing to worry about. Uh, and if there's a situation or a storm comes up, I call you, you're there. So being a part of the dealership and, and selling Wagyu docks, it's a comfort feeling knowing that even in the worst weather, if I go out there, nothing's really going to be wrong, but I like to help my customer out. And that seems to have been a, uh, one of the driving factors of why I'm being so recommended. And uh, our, our, our lake, the rep lake that I represent, was really not a Wahoo lake until three years ago. Now it's a Wahoo lake, and you can see more of the more docks on our lake. And it's being really the dock that's sought after. So it makes the sales process pretty easy. And it also helps customers that you can take around and show the different types of docks out there they can see the difference. You know, I, I came to Wahoo because I believed in a product and selling a product, you know, that that is, is superior in the dock industry. And I personally uh, feel like that Wahoo is is on cutting technology uh, and, and they just have a superior product in the dock industry. And uh, I believe in, you know, backing a product uh, and installing, and I'm, I'm, I'm very fortunate that, uh, to be in the Wahoo team. Uh, the Wahoo team, uh, their engineers, all of the faculty and the staff at, at Wahoo uh, are just superior. They are on time. Um, I really like the product because of the, the engineering aspect of it, and um, that's why I became a dealer. And uh, we've been Wahoo dealers for seven years. And uh, we like the Wahoo product because uh, we believe that Wahoo builds the best, highest quality residential and commercial aluminum floating dock on the market today. And uh, we've had nothing but help and support from the Wahoo family. Anytime we have issues or anything, we can pick up the phone, call them, they respond to us, they resolve our problems. Uh, and our customers just love the product. We've not had a customer that was dissatisfied with any dock that we've put in provided to us by Wahoo. Uh, another thing important about the Wahoo product especially is that the aesthetics. From a woman's point of view, they're the prettiest dogs out there, I have to say that. Um, and we've had families and homeowners add decorative touches that made their docks true outdoor living spaces. And beyond the engineering, you start looking at the beauty of the product and it just makes it an easy sell. When it sits next to a competitor's product, hands down, it's the best stop. Right, there's not another manufacturer that has a product that's anywhere near what it produces. I mean, we look at ourselves as the Mercedes dealers of floating docks. There are cheaper docks out there, there's no better dock. So the important thing to understand, and I hope it underlines everything that we do, is that we're serious dock folks. This is, um, we're relatively educated, we're relatively, uh, I think, uh, competent, um, and we take what we do very seriously. This is, this is our jobs, our careers, this is what, when we're 80 years old, we're going to look back and say, we did a good job, we've made, you know, we have made the dock business better. I, that's not my overarching goal. My overarching goal is to do what I do well. And I'm proud of what we've achieved at Wahoo, and I, and I expect great things for the next 10 years. But if you look at the company and you look at our reputation and our track record, and you know even the competitors really can't beat us up on being unethical, on building a dock that breaks. Um, there's not a whole lot of legitimate things that people can say about us on, in a negative framework. We're here to look in the mirror and say, I've done the best job I can do, and I enjoy what I do. It's, it's, the, it's the truth. Um, so, uh, and I hope, and I think it's reflected in our product and in our company and in our people.